Oh, you want a video on this? Uh, okay then. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Angela and today, yes, ENC Esselmont's Dancer's Lament, the first of the past two Ascendancy novels. Um, I was about to almost to say trilogy, but I think there will be a fourth one, so not a trilogy anymore. Uh, so yeah, I absolutely loved this book. This ticked all the boxes for me. It was well able to help me with my Esselmont cravings that I seem to have developed since I've read Night of Knives. So yeah, um, definitely uh, enjoyed reading this. So this is set before the Melasen Book of the Fallen. So it's like a prequel um, before the Melasen Empire has fully formed. And it also gives us the backstory of Kalenbad and Dancer. So it's obviously linked into the Melasen Book of the Fallen. But I would say because it's meant as a prequel that it does work by itself. So people who haven't read Melasen yet, I think would be able to read it. The only downside that I would see is that a lot is presupposed when it comes to the magic system. Not so much when it comes to the characters, um, but I think the magic system, you really get no explanation. And I'm really not sure how this will work for a reader who hasn't read any Melasen. But maybe some of you who have read Past to Ascendancy can let me know and tell me what do you think? Would this work? for people who don't know anything about Melasen, I'm really not so sure. I don't think it works as well as, for example, Knight of Knives, but yeah. So what's it about? As I say, it's about, yeah, the origin story of um, Kalenbad and Danza. Only here they're called Wu and Doreen. Um, and yeah, it's about how they meet. So we, um, and yeah, this first meeting doesn't go too well <laughs> because uh, Doreen finds out that, and this isn't much of a spoiler, this is really the very first um, two, three pages. Um, Doreen finds out that Wu has stolen something from him and he wants it back. And he starts then to follow him and follows him into the city of Li Heng because not only does he want his property back but he also wants Wu to know that he picked the wrong person um so yeah it's about a story about yeah almost enemies to friends um it's a story about two young men who yeah are also a bit on a quest for yeah their place in the world um Doreen was trained as an assassin and yes he wants to make his mark in the world and the same goes for Wu. Wu is a mage. Wu wants to kind of like yeah try out magic but also find more magic and yes so we're following those two to the city of Li Heng. Now like all cities by Esselmont I love this one as well. Um, the setting is just superb. This is an ancient city and it's believable as an ancient city. It's really obvious that Esselmont's training as an archaeologist pays off here because, yeah, this city is just very organic. Um, as I say, it's very believable that this city is really, really old and we get to see it in all its glory, kind like from the top to the very bottom. Um, and in a topographical sense, because we're on the rooftops, there is lots of fighting scenes on the rooftops going on. Um, I'm no fight expert. I have no idea if they're realistic or not, but you know what? I don't care. It's a fantasy novel. They're really fun and great to read. That's was the important bit here. So I don't know if you can actually disarm somebody this way or skewer them on your dagger or whatever. No, but as I say, they're great to read. So 
for me that's all that counts um, but we also kind like go down into tunnel systems that are under the city um, and also in a socio-economic sense kind like we have the marble palaces and we have yeah almost like a court where we have scenes but we also have scenes amongst the lowest of the low so to say um when it comes to the characters the characters are equally enjoyable to read both Wu and uh, Doreen are very well rendered um and yeah the relationship between them and how it develops is also kind of like very um interesting to read and um yeah if you want to know how dancer gets his name this is the book to find out um for those who have read melasen and yeah want this origin story of those two melasen characters um Cullen, Red, and dancer um also what i found interesting even though i haven't read much melasen yet well not but almost almost halfway there um but what i found interesting is when we meet Cullen, Red, and dancer in the melasen novels not there yeah they're mature um also kind of like very how shall i say almost yeah a bit cynical in parts no they have ascended already um whereas here we are really have as i say not two young men who want to find their not just find a place in the world but also make a mark on the world and well yeah if you have read melasen then you know how how if that was successful or not there are other characters apart from Wu and Doreen. Um, we have, for example, a couple or a group of um, city mages. And they have a little bit the same function as the sappers have in Melasen Book of the Fallen. So they provide a little bit of comic relief um, when it comes to the story. And we also have some really badass female characters. We have almost a whole battalion of them um, trained in kind like martial arts and sword fighting. Um, and at first when they were introduced, I was kind of like, mm, very cliche, but um, no, they're not. Uh, and Asselmont is really great in that respect, I have to say. I mean, his style overall, it's a very utilitarian way of writing. Now, it's there to get the job done and to tell us the story. And it does that in an exemplary way. So it's not a language that is flowery or that sparkles or anything. But what he does really, really well is that he has those half sentences and they subvert a character, a trope in a marvelous way. And that happens as well when this kind of like group of yeah sword fighting virgins is introduced and you're already rolling your eyes and thinking, yeah, yeah right, I really needed that now. Um, but then we have this, as I say, half sentence and yeah, suddenly it really, really works out and you're like, wow, that is something very different. Um, and on that level, the book is really wonderful and really worked very well for me um, we have other female characters we have Shalmanat so she is yeah more or less in charge of the city she's also known as the protectress and yeah um, I don't want to say too much about this character but she is definitely also a big surprise when it comes to female characters and characters that hold a lot of power um, so yeah very enjoyable indeed um, and what I also liked is how Esselmont and he does this in other books as well um, mixes the Melasen um, magical system of the Warrens which in this case is mostly used by the city mages with a much much older type of magic 
and we have kind of creatures that are linked to this in this book that have links to this really old ancient magic i mean li hang as a city already is depicted as being very old and there for a long long time but this type of magic is even older so we're getting like almost another layer of um like another timeline in this book by introducing this yeah yeah creatures and also um, practitioners of magic that are yeah very old and very linked to this very old type of magic i think he weaves those two really well into each other um yeah um i think this book has elements for yeah Malazan newbies Malazan fans in equal measures as i say you get a backstory an origin story of two characters um but you also get in some respects uh, some really nice foreshadowing uh, so there are scenes where if you have read Malaz and you're like oh wow that's interesting um because you know of course how this will develop no but i think it's equally interesting perhaps to read for people who are not so glued into melasen because um yeah as i said it's meant to work as a prequel and those are enjoyable scenes to read definitely will read on um and yeah will hopefully have read the first three before the next one comes out okay thank you for watching and as always happy reading and all the best